Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Cloud Links, the CX Experience podcast. My name is Frank Wassenberg. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, I am Kevin Sheehan, Frank's partner. Welcome. So today is a little different. Um, we have a gentleman joining us from the National Restaurant Association who is a client of ours. And we thought it would be great to have uh, Jim Santiago on, uh, on with us today. He's the senior director of operations, of customer operations for the National Restaurant Association. And we wanted to bring Jim on because he's just been through the entire process of being with a contact center provider, evaluating one, implementing one, and is now in a, in a steady state using the contact center. So we thought today would be a great uh, story to kind of walk everyone through the ins and the outs of the service. So Jim, I got to tell you, thank you very much, Jim, for joining us. Hey, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys for inviting me. I, uh, I'm excited to go through this and uh, talk about the experience we had with uh, CloudLink as well as uh, choosing a provider that was going to sure. uh, be the best solution for us. Um, before before we even come out of the gate, you know, mm -hmm. one of the things that I thought was so interesting about having Jim on first, um, the National Restaurant Association. You know, in 2020, <laughs> the 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 demands of your support team for the restaurants that you guys represent. I mean, this must be like that that greatest generation year where it's been all hands on deck. Yeah, it, it has been. And, you know, even though in the beginning of this pandemic, you know, restaurants started shutting down, we just got even more busier because we we pro provide support for the restaurant industry. We advocate for them. We provide training. So what our support to the restaurant industry was just tightened. So our volume was was nonstop trying to support uh, not only the restaurateurs, but the people who work in restaurants. Right. And and for everyone who's watching this, uh, to point out the, the challenge that Jim had, you know, you're you're overseeing a migration of your call center to a cloud based environment, being mm -hmm. the National Restaurant Association at the height of COVID-19. I mean, that's, you had a busy year. You have to say it, the least. Yeah, it was, it, it was busy for sure. It's <clears throat> it's. When you think of that migration, you know, the, it was it was scary to think that we could even go through a migration. And at, and at one point before, you know, I met Frank or we got into the process, I I in my mind, I was thinking, OK, I'm going to wait till 2021. But for a lot of reasons, that wasn't the case. Sure, sure. And we've seen that, obviously, with a lot of call centers who never would have seriously considered a cloud migration, who all of a sudden had to architect a very quick jumping out of the airplane uh, when COVID hit. But specifically to the NRA, what was what was the primary goal you were looking to accomplish to, to move to a, a cloud-based contact center environment? Well, if you look at post-pandemic, I got to the organization in August in 2019, and my job was to just really dive down and just see where all our gaps were. And the, one of the biggest gaps was the provider that we had just wasn't the provider to bring us to the next level of artificial intelligence and really serving people, uh, you know, a lot of self-serve help. So the challenge, that was a huge challenge. And I, I jumped in and thought that our contract ended in in the end of 2020, if you guys remember that. But <laughs> in fact, you know, I started talking to CloudLink in October 2019. And once we started going through the process, we realized that contract actually ends ended in the first end of the first quarter 2020. So we were we we definitely had our backs up against the wall, but I, I needed to do that because we were paying uh, an absorbent amount of money for not that many options, meaning artificial intelligence, survey, QA, and above normal usage charges in the industry. Right. So outside of the 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 cost savings from usage and outside of such, you know, valuable tools like an artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. what else were you looking to gain in your new environment and in, in your, your perfect state? Is one 
big thing was being that I was new was getting a getting a company that was going to bring us not just what we needed uh, in the interim with the AI and everything else I was talking about, but I wanted a company that was going to going to bring us into five years from now. Because when I joined the the EVP told me where he wanted me had to have the company in five years. So I had to take a solution who was going to grow and get me where I needed to be in five years as far as uh, as far as even income to the organization. Uh, a system that was going to grow with us and grow with the demands of the net, the restaurant industry that I've, I got to learn soon after moving on. Sure, sure. Um, and this is great talking to somebody who's now after the fact. Yeah. What were the perceived roadblocks before you met us, like in your just mind of taking on this challenge, what did you think the pain points were going to be? Well, in my career, I went through a lot of different conversions. So my pain point was just going to be the amount of time that I needed to invest and my team needed to invest to move to another solution at a time where the company was at its fastest growing pace. So the biggest challenge that I was preparing myself for was more 16 to 20 hour days uh, prior to meeting up with CloudLink. So I, I said, okay, not only, only am I starting a new job, but not only am I tasked to make things efficient, one of the first things I had to do was come up with a better solution. Yeah. A delivery channel solution. So the biggest challenge was going to be, uh, again, time and then resources to get all the information I need. What companies am I going to select? Who's going to do the best for us in this environment other than some of the other environments I came from? I came from a lot of financial environments. Right. Uh, and so it was it was going to be overwhelming, I thought, uh, sure. just coming on be before I got hooked up with uh, CloudLink. Well, thank you. Um, outside of the time and the resources, which is usually is a universal thing that people find that they're they're worried about, what was there any processes that you had your eye on specifically that you wanted to change in the National Restaurant Association, how they did things? Yeah, well, I think the processes were the well, what I talked about before, the QA processes, the self-help, I wanted to create uh, agent and manager scorecards, and I didn't feel that the system that they had was going to do that for me. And uh, what I mean by scorecards is on that's on a staffing level where I can create a scorecard to to hold people accountable for metrics so we can meet the company goals. Right. So they, there was no way to really measure uh, with the other system I was using, effectively measure metrics in a way where I can where I can get business results. So that that that's huge in itself. Oh, it's massive. Just even looking to do something like that, you've already gone through the time it's going to take. Mm. Your, your 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 the processes you're looking to improve. I think most people when they tackle something like this, they forget that they've got a day job they got to do as well. I mean, you you've got to keep the business running. It's not like you can say, hey, put the whole thing on hold while we go pick a new vendor. I mean, you're still running the place. Well, not just running it. You realize I, when I thought I had till the end of 2020, to, I said, okay, you know, 18 system, that that's great. But it wasn't just the time and effort. You got to realize I was new to the organization. So it was my learning curve, me building up a network, me getting to know the business, me making contacts in this industry. So when day job was heightened for me, because it's not like I was at the organization for a long time. I'm at the organization a very short time. And so it's day job, learning curve, moving to a new system, which was, which was, I thought was going to be the death of me. You know, by now I should be dead, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was some hairy times in there, even so, you know, it's kind of like that thing, like Mike Tyson's famous quote, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the nose, right? <laughs> you, you go with it as best you can, no matter what, and you still kind of deal with some hurdles, no matter what. Yeah. Um, I know you had somewhat of a comfort level with contact center in the cloud, but yeah. were, did, were you comfortable as a whole staying in that technology or migrating to that technology? Or was there some trepidation around that? Uh, I was comfortable with it. But being still, I think the cloud base is still new. I definitely had trepidation because I didn't, I didn't, I never went through a full cloud conversion. Uh, 
with me managing it from the beginning. So I went through it in my former company I was just with, but it was a lot larger company and there was there was people assigned to every piece and part of it. So my my piece was this, where now my piece coming into this solution was I, I manage the entire process. So yeah, when you talk about trepidation, is it absolutely because now I'm managing a a cloud conversion from beginning till end, and I really didn't know what was involved in that. And, and you've got to almost learn a new language and and learn new skills because you've got evaluations, you've mm -hmm. got um, negotiations involved. You got to find out who's telling you a load of a load of crap and who's telling you the truth. I mean, yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff to figure out and learn because this is it's a challenge to figure out that. And then the language of these vendors, they all say the same thing at different ways and the hidden kind of story is the challenge. You know, I think that was one of the things that I uncovered with you is you put a lot of effort into really finding out what they weren't telling you. You were, you were more keen to that. Maybe that's just the New Yorker in you, but you, there was a lot more kind of focus on what weren't they telling us. Right. And it's funny because you know me, I work all off of sticky notes. So you can imagine, and I'm honest, I got, I got sticky notes, all the points I wanted to make, uh, but you hit on a couple of them and it, it, that was, Definitely it is, is a, who's going to, I don't want to go to the dog and pony show that everybody's going to give me. So when you talk about the, the investigation part of it, you know, there was the whole RFP process that in my mind, you know, the RFP process for me was, is usually six, seven months. Well, I realized, uh, I didn't have that much time. So, <laughs> yeah. and you know, of course we went, we went through it. It's, we needed to do an RFP. Pro I think we got it done with CloudLink in uh, in less than two months, Frank. I mean, it was it was it was done like real quickly. And you went overboard with vendors, just as an observer. Like you, you probably you cast a very wide net from the people I think you were looking at. Yeah, I think we opened it up to uh, six or seven initially, narrowed it down to three really quick, and and then got it down to two even faster. Yeah. And then and then got rocking and rolling within within a within a couple of months. Again, once once we got rocking and rolling, it was that's when I had to reach out to my current vendor. And I realized that I didn't have till the end of 2020. I had till the end of the first quarter to do this conversion. So I was almost ready to stop the process until the next year, until until I got more comfortable with the cloud link and realized uh, what they actually can do for us. Yeah. Now, once you're in the project, because I, I agree that there was that condensed time frame, but you it, it's a challenge for people because you have a condensed time frame. Yep. But on the surface, there's so much literature to go through to see who's the right supplier for you. You know, you kind of rely on some industry standards, Gartner reporting and the like. But now you've got to find which vendor makes the most sense for you. And just just to get to the point of who you want to speak to is mm -hmm. a challenge, right? I mean, you could have, you can go the route of having a meeting with every single vendor and having a meeting with every single guy and a demo before every single, before you even go one step forward, but you could really do your due diligence and have 30 meetings before you're even ready to issue an RFP to somebody if you go down that process. Um, so let, let me ask you a question on that front. Now, now you're in the project, right? Okay. You're, you're kind of in the project. You're saying, hey, we, we've picked a vendor. We've gone through some negotiations, which we should probably talk about the negotiations because that was a project in and of itself. Um, but once you're in the negotiations and you've picked a vendor, right? Did you was there anything that you that you found enlightening or that was unexpected within the process? With vendor, yeah, but even even before that, I don't know if you wanted me to get into it now. I mean, the process to pick you to pick CloudLink before I even got to that point, I think, is more prevalent to to this to that point is is uh, I came aware of you before I got here. As soon as I started, I had a team member that had met you at a uh, a conference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, initially, I the, the only reason why I met with CloudLink was because I promised my manager that I would. I said, all right, yeah, here's <laughs> another one of these companies. They're going to give me the dog and pony show, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of the day, they're going to be taking money out of my pocket. So <laughs> what? So the funny thing is, is once I agreed to meet with CloudLink, you guys, I'm in Florida, you guys are now in New York, is when I found out that Frank took a plane trip to meet with 
me for an hour to take a plane trip back. And that that set the stage right away. Sure. To to talk further. I literally wasn't going it was just a courtesy meeting that turned into a great relationship. So even before that, yeah, I, I agree. That's what Kevin, I think. No. Yeah, that's what I think we need to. If, yeah, if I could, no, we do. We do. If I could just jump in, you know, pre-COVID, yeah. we've never taken a project for any client where we have not gone to them and sat with them face to face just to get a feel for who they are and and how the people in the call center are ever. The 2020 has been really hard on us because we haven't been able to do that because we're just very focused on, you can get a vibe from people of what they're really trying to accomplish, which, mm -hmm. you know, nothing, we're not anti gardener, but when people <laughs> look to make decisions based upon what uh, this magic quadrant tells them that that box knows nothing about you or the people in your call center or, or what your business is really about. That's so yeah, that's a big must for us. And it's yeah, also a it, personality match too. We got to make sure we yeah. can work with you. I mean, we've had clients that we've said after we've gone through the due diligence to say, listen, this isn't the right fit or you're not ready for this project yet. I mean, we just finished a project where we just we don't like you. We're definitely like a position now. We're, we're like, <laughs> we've had one or two where we're like, yeah, pass. But we've well, had Frank, it. You said, you said that to me too. You said, hey, after one of the first meetings, you said, hey, this, we may not be the right company for you. That, that's why you asked a lot of questions. But one thing I respect it too is, and I, I know we speak a lot of, I have a, I have an elderly mother who, who's in the hospital a lot. And the first time I met Frank, Frank, I don't even know if you remember this, is you flew in, you were on your way here. And I may, I almost didn't make it to work that day because my mother was yeah. going to the hospital. And Frank was like, listen, I'll turn around. I'll go back to the airport. I'll come back tomorrow. And I was like, no, no, no. Just come on yeah. down. Let, let, it's the best way to vet somebody. Best way to vet somebody is get them out the door. Well, that, I think that goes with your story because when I was there, Rolando was kind of like, hey, Frank, he kind of thought this was a, a phone call, but you're here, so that's great. <laughs> so <it's good> stuff. <laughs> uh, hey, so, so those are the funny things. I mean, th these are stories where, I, I mean, listen, you, you make relationships in this business. You, you kind of become friends with people you do business with, not the other way around because it becomes a challenge. Um, and, and you've been great to us as we've gone through this project. I think there's been a real spirit of partnership in this because there was a, the, you know, candidly, there's a mutual respect in yeah. the effort that each one of us had to put in to make this thing work. There's no kind of my way or the highway. There was no kind of just listen to me and get out of the way or, hey, I'm going to just ram this down your throat. It's no, let's let's figure out the right way to do this so that we can both come up with the best solution at the end, at the, at the end of the road. Listen, is, the funny thing is, is I and I've been in the industry a long time. So I thought that I didn't need a company like CloudLink because I thought I was the expert in the field. Sure. And once we started going through this process, not that I couldn't have gotten us to the point where we converted, but I, I truly feel that I would have been paying more. I wouldn't have got the services that I did. I wouldn't got the uh, extra benefits that I did. I, 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 I wouldn't have got everything I needed to. And I realized real quick, um, not, I wasn't I wasn't the expert that I thought I was. And like I said, I, I could have got to the point of conversion, but I could not get us to the point of how happy we are with the with the vendor we chose and what we're still getting out of it uh, because of the cloud link negotiations during that whole uh, crazy process. Oh, it was, it was <laughs> thank you, thanks so much. That's yeah, no, thank you. The negotiation process was brutal. I mean, there was there's yeah. there's probably there's probably a half hour conversation on that alone where yep. you know and, and we put we did put a lot of effort into your contract before your legal team even got it, which I know they appreciated to make their their road a little simpler. But hey, l let me ask you a question on that. Like, hey, Frank, wait, just while well, it's on my mind, when you when you talk about the the legal, I think it's 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 important for people to know too is I never was involved in the legal uh, aspect aspects of the contract. I would negotiate with the vendor and then the my legal would always go to my legal departments well this time i actually sat in on the legal meetings and frank sat in on the meetings with the lawyers and these lawyers got an education like you wouldn't believe i i couldn't from a legal standpoint from the contract standpoint what frank was able to do with the contracts before it even went to my lawyers was was unbelievable. He, I, I really thought Frank was a a lawyer in his uh, former life. Sure. And <laughs> I slept, what, I slept in Holiday Express, but that's fine. 
Yeah, so he he actually came into the legal negotiations too. Yeah. And that that's that's usually unheard of. And I asked if I could be a fly on the wall. And I was in those meetings too. And it was it was a whole different education. What Frank was able to do to educate the the lawyers was amazing. As a matter of fact, their lawyer started treating us like we weren't the customer. You know, it's a and I forgot the things that were said, but he started to he started to get the attitude like, hey, well, you know, you guys either take this or use this verbiage or we don't need you. That's that's the type of uh, uh, perception I got. And with Frank and I, it was really quick that it was like, hey, listen, you know, Frank is on there. It's like, listen, we're the customer. You're not the customer. I'll end this conversation right now. So we actually, during one meeting, told the lawyers exactly how the meeting was going to go. And we interrupted their meetings. So it was it was really cool. <laughs> to, yeah. But honestly, though, Frank, the way he just would can tear down a legal contract and explain the a a phone contract or a cloud based contract to a group of lawyers that are only only looking at it from, I guess, Frank, like a legal technical yeah. jargon. It that was that one thing in itself was priceless for me because it right. helped us. It helped us get it done quickly and got us the things we needed in the contract itself. Because uh, if I go just take another 30 seconds is. Take all the time you want. You complimented me. I love it. Let's go. No, what it was (laughs) anytime, like we love the vendor we chose, but there's every once in a while you get some things that you're disagreeing on. What was great is being that Frank was so intricately involved in the legal contract. As soon as they would tell us something that they may have to charge us for, Frank is already sitting there looking at the RFP and looking at the legal contract. He goes, that's not what we agreed to. And it changes the whole dynamics of, of your relationship. Because uh, not that they're trying to get over. In this industry, every time you want something, it's, oh, it's going to be another 5000 It's going to be another 5000 Frank is quick to always say, it's already in the contract. It's already in the contract. So that, 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 that one thing in itself is amazing. Yeah, well, and, and I appreciate that because that. Let me tell you, we, the effort that goes into that, right, is yeah. is all about not having surprises at the end. We we hate those hidden gotchas, you know. We and we've learned. Kevin and I listen. Kevin and I have been in in telecom for twenty years now, and the amount of times when back in our old life where we would sell something and then somebody would come back and say, "Oh, by the way, it's twenty grand in construction costs," or "Oh, by the way, it's fifteen grand in." Yep. That you, you learn from hard experience that you have to get these things up front and negotiate it up front and and. You have to know what to negotiate and what to give and take with. Well, Frank, you know me as a, as a fellow New Yorker. I, I never want to admit that I'm wrong. I don't know something or ask for help. But it was amazing when I had to reach out on usage charges. And I'm not a math whiz. Uh, Frank doesn't claim to be a math whiz. But he was able to break it down. As a matter of fact, and it's funny, I swear to you not, this is just something I always keep here. It's not one of my sticky notes. I have, I don't know if you, I have this pad of piece of paper. And it tells me how to calculate what my usage charges are per minute. <laughs> and Frank was the one who gave me the formula, and I use it every single month. <laughs> and I swear to you not, you know me, Frank. I just wasn't going to go to Pony Show for this meeting. These are my sticky, these are my sticky notes for this meeting. I love this, it. This I keep here as a reference to the formulas too. So I know that I'm actually saving on those usage charges per month. For, yeah, uh, for all, all the people who are watching, uh, Jim Santiago's uh, sticky notes will be on our website. Uh, by the we're having a special week. section. A special That's section. the new website divide. Jim's Jimmy sticky. Jim's sticky, <laughs> Jim's sticky notes. RFP process. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And the one I was just talking about. This is, the, I I guess I should, when I talked to about Frank with the negotiations, the RFP and the legal, I said this is what the note I wrote to myself. Frank is my muscle liaison. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Kevin's going to have a field day with that one later because he's like, hey, Frank, show him how many Cokes you drank in the last three days. No, no that's great. That's the perfect description for uh, Wasmerk. He's the muscle liaison. Yeah, but it, it's, if I put it in a business way for other people, I, you know, is, is when a meeting is going in a direction it shouldn't be going, whether it's with the vendor, whether it's with the lawyers, Frank, when I say my muscle, he – knows when to, and he has no problem saying this to me, he stops the meeting. He goes, stop. And he starts breaking it down using 
using his quote unquote muscle, but people don't realize he's using his knowledge muscle. Right. And he, it's really cool the way you guys would just stop it. Where me, I would just be going back and forth, arguing in as a New Yorker, arguing until they agree with me. But <laughs> Frank, Frank uses his his brain. That I, that's what I mean by that muscle to just sure. stop and flex flex his muscle through knowledge, through contract, through the legal process, through his 20 years in the telecom industry. That 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 yeah. that helps me that helps me out a lot because it keeps me quiet and saves the perception of what people think about me as a senior director. And I let Frank do all that muscle behind it. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind sure. being a jerk. That was that was initially that was our business model, Jim. We yeah. we said to ourselves wouldn't it be great if we could somehow productize the ability to save somebody the time and the resources that you didn't have along with our expertise in negotiating and just as a product, we're an insurance policy. Yep. You're gonna we're gonna be in front of you every step of the way and we're gonna guarantee you that you're gonna make only smart decisions with this very big, you know, career affecting purchase. Hey, all I know is I went from thinking I was gonna work sixteen to twenty hours a day. To, I was working 10 hours a day. Frank was working 16 hours a day for us, right? Yeah. yeah. That's it. What's really cool when I, when I went through the process for Frank, and again, totally honest, he came in. I'm like, eh, this is, you know, I, I seen these guys before. I'm from New York, so he's not going to, he's going to, not going to pull that crap on me. You know, I'll give the guy a show. I'll say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to use you, and then I'll get rid of him. But uh, it, it wound up being total opposite of that is, you know, Frank was able to quickly let me know that, hey, this ain't a scam. It's good. It's not going to cost you anything. This is, you know, we make our money on the back end with the vendors. And just, you know, he's he he proved to me that he was here for me and for us in a short amount of time. And I'm actually dealing, I forgot her name. I'm actually dealing with a lady who is looking to, to use your services. And I talked to her. The first thing she wanted to know, she goes, and I had to scale down my New York accent because I think if she heard my New York accent and Frank's, she would have thought that we were actually partners, but we're not. Yeah, and, or, or, or that we look alike and there's a st that different scam alike. entirely. <laughs> but uh, she wanted to know right away. She goes, okay, is this legit? W what's the deal? I said, listen, I said, it's not only legit. I said, yes, they are a real company. They really have that knowledge. They really will work for you. And it, I, I just had to, it took me about 20 minutes before she was convinced because what I did was, I was talking about the RFP process that you guys put together for us. Mm -hmm. It was, I said, she, Frank narrowed down the vendors. He sent an RFP with 367 line Excel line items to it that they had to answer in full in order for us to consider. And I actually shared that with her and she was, she was dumbfounded. She was like, okay, you, you've, yeah. you've proved it to me. I, I didn't know that they go in this depth. I said, listen, while you're sleeping at night, they're putting together these type of questions and doing this research and doing every, I said, you don't have to do anything. And and it's true. I did, Frank, I did very little, but give you information and let you know what our expectations are, what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And I was like, like you, you got that domain that you sick on somebody. I said, Frank, go get them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hence the business model. I think that yeah. works is what we're talking about now. Now, now, Jim, let me now. I want to. I want. I appreciate this kind of a conversation because you know, yes. having you on as the first client is 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 great because it's it's going to be the most unfiltered kind of stories that we have. And there's there's and challenges to this. So, and only because I was so skeptical of you, skeptical. Oh God, yeah. So that makes it even better. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no, complete. Like, who is this goofball? Who, who is this? Guy?